engineers in this video tutorial you're gonna learn how to make figure 6.58 go ahead and fire up Autodesk Inventor start a new part and let's notice that this part is in inches there's no metric label so go to tools document settings units make sure you're in inches and click on start a 2d sketch and we are going to start in the XY plane. Start by drawing a rectangle. And let's go to that. So the rectangle is going to be 3.78 by 2 inches tall. So click dimension. What was that? That was 3.78, 3.78, enter and zoom out a little bit or click front and then we're going to dimension that right side by two and we're going to do a lot of subtractive method here we're going to cut away from the block so the depth is going to be 2.24 in the extrusion so finish sketch click home click extrude that's 2.24 inches press enter or ok and now we have our block that we're going to start cutting away from. Let's go ahead and cut this section out first. And we have a 30 degree angle here. And from the top down, it's 0.74. So go to Autodesk Inventor. And I'm going to cut it away from the back side. So I'm going to go to the back. And it's going to be on the right here. So right click, New Sketch and go ahead and draw a line and a diagonal line like so and we want it to hang off of the edges on the top here click dimension and click the top and then the line and that is 0.74 and let's just double check 0.74 and the angle is 30 degrees let's click dimension again click that top click that and then that's going to be 30 and you'll see we needed that little bit of length there so that the line goes past that part. If it doesn't go past the part, for example, let's say it's like like right here, we want to make sure it's past the part. Now you'll notice and you'll probably wonder, okay, well, what about the length of this line here? How am I going to determine that? and that is a little bit tricky so this point right here where the 30 degree line is off of is this length away from the corner of the block so what we have to do is add these two to get that and that's really very simple so don't be intimidated by that click on trim and trim that line so that that point lives on this line here then click dimension and we're going to do so I'm going to do 1.12 plus 0.74 inside of the dimension tool. So I'm going to click on this edge and then click on the point and that was 1.12 uh, plus use the plus symbol 0.74 and press enter. And now we have uh, the the correct spot for where that angle starts. I'm going to go ahead and click trim and trim that oh. That did not do what I wanted it to do. Uh, go ahead and click project geometry so we get those lines there. And now try trim again. There we go. Now, this is done, right? It says fully constrained in the bottom right. That's what we want. Finish sketch. And I'm going to click on this corner right here. We're going to extrude. We're going to cut. So click on that cut all the way through. We're going to cut that all the way through. And then I'm going to click home again. And now we have the start of this correct shape. I'm going to do this next angled cut here. So again, I'm going to go to the back side here. Right click new sketch. Click on the line tool. Draw a diagonal line, doesn't matter right now. Project the surface here. Press escape. And that's a 45 degree angled line. So click dimension. Click the line and the top make sure that says 45 and 
and then we're going to trim here and here and the top of that point is 0.74 away from the corner so click dimension so click, click the corner and the point and make that 0.74 and it'll automatically make the correct shape and you'll see fully constrained finish sketch extrude cut that little corner away Oop, let's try that again there we go click OK click the home and now we're getting somewhere we have this angled line here that is 45 degrees the thickness is 0.5 so let's go ahead and right click on the surface, new sketch, and we're going to click project. I'm going to project the, these two lines here. Click the line tool, draw a diagonal line like so. Click dimension, click this line and this line, and that should be 45. Click trim, trim that top part, click dimension, click the point, click the edge at the point five zero and this line should extend past click project geometry project the geometry of both surfaces there click trim trim that and now what we have here we're gonna have this shape that we can cut away but it's not gonna do it the way we want to so we gotta close that shape so I'm gonna click on that point to the corner to the corner to that point so we have that triangle shape to cut away we're going to use that to cut away with. Click Finish Sketch. Click Extrude. You're going to click those two shapes and cut and through all. And you have the beginning of, well, you're almost done pretty much. you got to cut away these two and the hole. And let's do this one right here. So that's 1 by 0.76. And that's pretty straightforward. So just go to the bottom right click new sketch and the bottom see how it says bottom like this on my view cube we're gonna rotate it like that so bottom is upside down project geometry click on rectangle draw a rectangle and the length is 1 the depth there is 0.76 and actually you know what let's just do the rest here so we can do one extrusion and that is another rectangle off of here the distance from the corner to this rectangle is one so click the edge here click this that's one the distance is 1.14 this distance right here is 1.14 and the depth is 0.54 so from the top to there that's 0.54 I check your dimensions it says fully constrained finish sketch click extrude cut through all and click those two squares those two rectangles and you'll see it'll cut away just like the image here and what do we have left we have the the hole here look at the dimensions for the hole the diameter is 0.625 with a depth of 1.25 so it's not going all the way through so that's what that means right click new sketch on that surface click point put a point there and let's locate it so it's 0.62 from the bottom to the point 0.62 and then it is 0.76 from this side to the point 0.76 finish sketch click hole and we're gonna click on termination here so the diameter is 0 0.76 I don't know why it's showing it in millimeters um, let me just check my document settings here 11 inches okay well whole uh, 5 so let me just delete the mm there and point point six two five. There we go. So it's just going to default to inches, and the depth here the it should show here. Let me hover over that. What's this going to say? It's going to say distance, which is the doo -doo. 
and that was let's go to the drawing 1.25 1.25 there's no information about what kind of hole or drill point it is so I'm gonna use the flat right there um, make sure you do that because the technical drawing is gonna change if you don't it's not gonna look the right way and click OK and bada bing bada boom we have 3d modeled figure 6.58 almost totally done in quick time click on that generic button let's make this aluminum click on save and I'm sorry what was the name 6.58 so figure oh, file name figure 6.58 and I'm gonna just put EX for example save um, you should be putting your name next to all of your files I'll go ahead and update I properties figure 6.58 and let's start a new drawing so new drawing again right click sheet one we're going to edit the sheet or you can use your custom template that should be ANSI size A I'm going to delete the text box the title block I'm sorry title block insert the ANSI A title block click on base we made the correct front view for this one which is awesome and lay down your parts there we're gonna go to three quarter scale so you have to type that in click OK and let's start adding our dimensions let's move some things around here just a little tip um, the number of dimensions that you see on the original drawing I'm asking you to recreate that should match so this is like the minimum number of dimensions you'll need to actually create the part so like if this was 10 dimensions then your your technical drawing should have 10 dimensions minimum so let's go ahead and add our dimensions so click on annotate click dimension and we're going to start off with uh, the one there and I'm gonna just edit my dimensions right off the get-go so right click edit dimensions uncheck trailing zeros I don't need it to be too precise I want that the, to be the point 2.12 click on text make sure we're in line click on the little pencil save I know I'm speed running this I'm trying to save you some time save and close we want it to be on Technic that looks nice we have this dimension try to line that up to lock it in so it looks good we need this dimension and then the overall dimension is the two corners the two yep one do, 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 do. we need the the height let's put the height on this one yeah so from here to here let's put the height and then let's put the angle here we're gonna put the distance that distance we'll put this angle and the height here yep what else do we need on this one I'll come back to it if I forget anything we're gonna need the centerline bisector I'm going to need this center mark on this circle. Okay, that center mark does not look nice, so I'm going to right click, edit center mark style, and again, I'm going to put millimeters for this. So that needs to be lowercase. I'm going to put 2mm for all of them and just see what happens. Save and close. That's a nice center mark, so I'm going to leave it alone. And let's go back to dimensioning we need the we need this right here and then the overall length the location of the circle let me move this 76 I'm just gonna grab it and move it I'm gonna grab 
grab this one and move that one over too. Uh, we need the height of the circle. And then the actual diameter of the circle. Oh wait, okay, so uh, click on hole and thread and then click the circle and then you'll see the note there. It'll automatically do it, which is nice. That's what you want. Click dimension, you want to give this dimension here and then the top, I'm sorry, this dimension and this dimension to get that 45. And then we need the dimensions up here. Yeah, we need these dimensions. So we're going to put this one. We need our center line bisector. We need this dimension here. And let's just do the overall. I know this is repetitive but that's okay for this specific one um i feel like i'm forgetting something what am i forgetting am i forgetting something this one right here yep so we need this and this okay so that overlaps we want to put that over here to make it easier for the viewer let's just go ahead and add this dimension too Yeah. Um, if you want to make it look cool, put that center line there. Uh, and then also double click and add the shading to your isometric. Sorry, I got like weirdly quiet there because I'm thinking. Uh, let's move the top view down just a little bit so it's not colliding with any of the lines. And then do the same with the front view. If I'm missing dimensions, call me out on that because sometimes I forget to add dimensions and that's not good. Okay, I think I'm done. So I'm going to go update the eye properties so that the custom, so that the, the title block gets updated. This is figure 6.58, company, AHS, subject engineering. And part number, figure 6.58, apply, close, and everything updated the way I wanted it to. And then save it. Make sure you save it as the correct file name with your name. And then you'll export that as a PDF. If you get any kind of errors, show me the error before you save. I just got an error off screen, but it's not an error that I'm worried about. File, export, PDF, save. And there you have it. Um, and then print it out and submit your work. Again, control P, best fit. Make sure you're on the correct printer. And click OK.